In lesson 13.1, you will use trigonometry with right triangles. In this first example, we're going to evaluate the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta. Angle theta is an acute angle of a right triangle, and to evaluate its trigonometric functions, we're going to label the side of length 12 as the opposite side to angle theta, the adjacent side is the leg of length 5, and the hypotenuse, which is the longest side opposite the right angle, has length 13. So by definition, the sine of that acute angle theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or 12 over 13. The cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or this ratio, 5 thirteenths. The tangent of theta is defined to be opposite over adjacent, or 12 over 5. Now the reciprocals of those three functions are the reciprocal of the sine is the cosecant. So the cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite, or 13 over 12. The reciprocal of the cosine is the secant, and the secant of theta then is hypotenuse over adjacent, or 13 over 5. And the reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent. So the cotangent of theta is adjacent over opposite, or 5 over 12. In this problem, we're given that the cosine of theta is equal to 5 eighths, and we want to find the values of the other five trigonometric functions of theta. So we'll draw ourselves a right triangle, and we'll label one of the acute angles theta. We'll apply the definition of cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we'll label the side adjacent to angle theta 5, and the hypotenuse 8. Now if we're going to find all trigonometric functions of theta, we're going to need to know the length of this missing leg. Because this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of that missing leg. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So the hypotenuse is 8, so that's the longest side squared. It's equal to the sum of the two shorter sides squared. So a squared plus, and in for b we'll put 5. 5 squared. Now we'll subtract 5 squared to bo from both sides to get a squared alone. So 8 squared, which is 64, take away 5 squared, which is 25, leaves a squared. To get just a, we need to take the square root of both sides. So a, and we would get two solutions, plus or minus the square root of 25, but because, uh, or 64, take away 25, which is 39. But because this is a length of a, a side of a right triangle, we don't care about the negative value that we're getting. So we'd choose positive square root of 39 as the length of that leg. Now it doesn't simplify because the only factors of 39 are 3 and 13, and neither are perfect squares. So now that our triangle's labeled, we're ready to find the other uh, five trigonometric functions of theta. We know the cosine, its reciprocal is the secant, so the secant of theta is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, or 8 over 5. We need the sine of theta. The sine of theta is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, or the square root of 39 over 8. The reciprocal of the sine is the cosecant. Cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite, so 8 over the square root of 39 and rationalizing that denominator. We'll multiply by this form of 1 so that we leave our ratio as 8 square roots of 39 over 39. Okay, we need the tangent of theta, and that's opposite over adjacent, so the square root of 39 over 5 and its reciprocal, the cotangent of theta, is adjacent over opposite, 5 over the square root of 39. And again, we need to rationalize the denominator. 
multiplying by a form of 1. 5 square roots of 39 over 39. Okay, here we're going to look at trigonometric values for angles of special triangles. And the first special triangle we're going to look at is the 45-45-90 degree triangle. Its sides are always in the ratio 1, 1, the square root of 2. So the sine of a 45 degree angle is always equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2, and we rationalize so that the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Its reciprocal is the cosecant. Cosecant of 45 degrees is always going to be hypotenuse over opposite, square root of 2 over 1, or just the square root of 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is always going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2, and we rationalize because we don't leave radicals in the denominator, so we get the square root of 2 over 2. Its reciprocal is the secant. Secant of 45 degrees is always hypotenuse over adjacent, square root of 2 over 1, or just the square root of 2. And tangent of 45 degrees is always opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 1, or 1. And the cotangent of 45 degrees is adjacent over opposite. So again, 1 over 1, or 1. Okay, now we can do the same thing with two other special angles. In this 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, the sides are always going to be in the ratio 1, 2, the square root of 3, the hypotenuse being twice the length of the shorter leg. The shorter leg is across from the uh, opposite, the 30 degree angle. So we can apply those definitions of our six trig functions to the 30 degree angle and the uh, 60 degree angle and come up with special ratios for those special angles also. Okay, we're going to use one of those special ratios of a special angle. Special angle is 30 degrees in this right triangle. We're going to solve for x. Now x is the length of the side opposite that 30 degree angle, and the hypotenuse is labeled as 15. Since, so, since those are the two sides that are labeled, we will use sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, to solve for x. The sine of 30 degrees is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, or x over 15. Now to get x alone, all we have to do is multiply both sides of this equation by 15. So x is equal to 15 times the sine of 30 degrees. Now we just found out that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so I'll substitute that in, that value in, that ratio, and multiply. So x is equal to 15 halves. The length of that missing leg is 15 halves units. In problem 2 on this page, we want to solve triangle ABC, and that means to find all unknown side lengths and angle measures. We're given three measures. We know that angle C is 90 degrees, angle B is 62 degrees, and side A, opposite angle A, is, has length 6. We need to find side B, opposite angle B. We need to find the hypotenuse, side C, opposite angle C, and we also need to know what the measure of angle A is. Well, the measure of angle A we can find by subtracting, because we know all three angles in this triangle sum to 180 degrees, and that means that the acute angles have to be complementary. Or if we subtract 62 from 90, we'll have the length or the measure of angle A, 28 degrees. Okay, then we need side B, and I'm going to use that uh, angle B, 62 degrees, it's adjacent side of length 6, and the opposite side would be side B. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. I'm going to use tangent of 62 degrees is equal to opposite 
over adjacent or b over 6 and to solve for b again all we have to do is undo that division and multiply both sides by 6 so in our calculator we want to put 6 times the tangent of 62 degrees 62 degrees is not one of our special angles so we have to approximate the length of side b in our calculator now make sure your calculator is in degree mode because there's also a radian mode that we'll learn about and if you put in 6 times tangent of 62 you should find that the length of side B rounded to two decimal places is 11.28. Okay, we also need side C to completely solve triangle ABC. And this time I'll use that 62 degree angle, the side of length 6, and I'm going to find the hypotenuse. So using hypotenuse over adjacent, or adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the cosine, I'll find the cosine of that 62 degree angle to be adjacent, which is 6, over hypotenuse C. Now our variable's in the denominator, so I'm going to create a proportion and set cross products equal to one another in order to solve for C. And divide both sides by the cosine of 62 degrees in order to get C alone. So C is going to equal 6 divided by the cosine of 60 degrees and again I'm going to have to use my calculator and approximate the length of side C. So 6 divided by the cosine of 62 degrees is 12.78 rounded to two decimal places. So we've solved this triangle. We knew three measures and we found the missing three. You are flying a kite four feet above the ground using 300 feet of line. With a wind speed of 40 miles per hour, the angle the kite line makes with the ground is 29 degrees. How high is the kite flying? Okay, so let's get you out here flying this kite. And we want to know how far above the ground that kite is flying. Well, the problem also tells us that the, the kite string makes an angle with the ground, the kite line makes an angle with the ground, or with a line parallel to the ground, an angle of 29 degrees. Well, that creates this right triangle that we can use to find x. And then because we're flying that kite four feet off the ground, once we find x, we can add four feet onto it to get that total height that the kite is flying off the ground. Okay, so we know that the kite string is 300 feet long. We know the hypotenuse. We're looking for the opposite side to this 29 degree acute angle. So we'll use opposite over hypotenuse or sine sine of 29 degrees is equal to x over 300. And again, to get x alone, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 300. So we'll put that in our calculator and approximate this length for x. So 300 times sine of 29 degrees is 145.44 feet, rounded to two decimal places. And we're going to add on that four feet that you're flying the kite above the ground. So we get a total height of 149.44 <clears throat> feet, approximately 149.44 feet. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems two through six even on pages 853 and 854 of your textbook.